Publishing for me was never a plan, but in retrospect, it was inevitable. When I was at college and I was spending a lot of time assembling information for my thesis, I thought it would make a book. And I went to see a publishing company called Studio Vista, and they were very interested, but thought I had nowhere near enough information. Very early on, I got asked to do Ronnie Scott's Jazz Club and hence some album covers, and I, I really liked that. And it, I was very aware, really from the beginning, this is a great way to build an audience and to play with ideas in public, as it were. So I started when I had an album cover. I would ask the printer to make me a set of film and a set of proofs of a double page without any text. So I was spending money and gathering that as I went along. And uh, I started to talk to publishers as I put together, you know, first a few pages and 10, 20 pages, eventually very nearly a completed book. And I never had a bite from a publisher. I had literally 27 formal rejections, basically because nobody knows you, far too expensive, also wrong. We wouldn't know how to produce it and market it commercially. People knew I wanted to do the book, and in particular the company that I was publishing my posters with. And I was sitting talking to them and, and a printer, and I said, I really don't understand the publishing world because I've got the book dummied up, I've got the film, and I've got 80,000 potential orders. And this printer, who was a Dutch printer, said, oh, really? Could you get that in writing? And I did. And he said, we'll do it on one condition. You form a company and do other books. Even as far as the early 70s, it was, it was not a world full of color and psychedelia. It was a bleak world, by and large. And the books were unbelievably colorful. I had no notion that we had to be restrained in how much imagery and colour we could put in. We just filled the books with colour and imagery. And no one was doing that at the time. You'd buy a, a book on an artist in, back in the mid-70s and you'd get a big tomb, masses of text and a few black and white pictures and you think, what is all that text telling you that a nice colour picture can't? And the answer is, it isn't, it's failing. I really wanted to make it work as a visual narrative and texture. So that when you were in it, you were enjoying it without being aware of it. That there was a, a story being told in colour and pattern and texture, as well as image. And if you put them together in the right way, they don't detract or challenge, they enhance and reinforce and tell the story better. And I, I think really editing was critically important. One of the most important jobs we had. When it came to designing the books, we kept it really simple, very classical layout, except that in classical book layout, the text was near the spine and we pulled it away so people wouldn't break the spine to read the text. So we, we pulled that out from the spine but, that, but the proportions of space around it, we almost, as I say, classical approach. And I did get designers who came to us with pictures cropped and switched and that, because they thought it would be more interesting. I said, you know, this isn't about the design in that sense. This is about showing off the artist's work to the best possible advantage. The design had to not get in the way of the story. We never sat down to make our books better. We just sat down to make them as we wanted them to be. But it was always done from the point of view of a powerful aesthetic idea, a joy in handling the finished product. This is something that's a true gift. This is what we want to make. So we weren't setting out to do better or worse than anyone else. It just so happens with that motivation, we did do better. It became very full-on. There was no time to do anything else. We were producing a book a month. 
My brother was better than me at editing. He was really good at editing. And I was more in the role of finding the artists and the book projects. But he did a great job of editing the book. But between us, though, you, you barely had time to breathe. And what we had, in retrospect, too little time for was managing our Dutch partners. And I say Dutch partners, plural, because it was one Dutch printing company that we did a, went into partnership with, but they split into two. And so we had two companies suddenly, Dragon's Dream and Paper Tiger. And it became impossible to monitor the commercial antics of the, our partners. So after five years, we decided that this isn't, we can't carry on. And either we bought them out or they bought us out. And one of the problems with us buying them out is we didn't have the accounts. So we couldn't get a backer to buy, to do it without the accounts. So they bought us out. And that was pretty much the end of our involvement in publishing. The sad thing for me is that I wanted to do books that look like the Willie Pogani, Lohengrin and Parsifal and Tannhauser. And we never quite got to that point. We wanted to do it with Lord of the Rings and we had a few other books we wanted to do. So they would be beautifully printed, but they would be illustrated and decorated like an illuminated manuscript. And we never did one of those. It was, it just didn't happen how we wanted it. To understand how to make a book, it's not rocket science. You can do that. We made every mistake. Didn't matter. In the end, they all worked. And the thing I would say is you have to trust yourself and do it exactly as you would want it. Don't try and think, hmm, this might sell better than this. Don't do that. Think, how would it be? How would you like this to be if it was perfect? If you went into that library in the sky and there on the shelf was that book, and you pulled it down, what would it look like? What would it be? And that was really how we set about doing pretty much everything, actually.